This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. I have to start this video out with stating the obvious. Sacks by themselves as a metric to determine greatness along the defensive line. It's a horrible stat. Any individual stat by itself makes a horrible argument for a defensive player's effectiveness or ineffectiveness. At the end of the day, football is not about the stats you accumulate, the percentages that you stack up, but the impact that you have on the game. These stats are attempts to quantify what is not quantifiable. And it's important to remember that because there'll be a lot of people that tell you that sacks are everything or that pressures are everything. And it's a combination of all that. It's a cohesive and coherent argument you can make about a defensive player based on what you see on film, what the impact is in games, et cetera, et cetera. So when you see a sack number, you got to understand that not every sack is built the same. Not everybody is going to have as easy a time as getting a sack. And some people might have a excessively easier time to get a sack. And that makes that number not matter as much in, if you're using it for an individual argument about an individual player being better than another player. Not to say that the production does not matter, but the production itself in a vacuum is irrelevant. Things like a double team percentage greatly affect uh, a football uh, a edge rusher's ability to get and accumulate sack numbers. Average time to throw affects a quarterback's ability. I'm mean, not a quarterback, a edge rusher's ability to accumulate sacks. Um, you know, all of these things, even stuff as simple as the defense gets a lot of three and outs, which is something that I want to talk about this Browns defense, because there is a reason People look at Miles Garrett's 14 sacks as more impressive than TJ Watt's 19. One of those reasons is because the Browns led the league in three and outs, and they were also the defense that played the least snaps in the NFL, which meant that they got offenses off the field the most, the quickest, with the most efficiency, which means they were doing their job at the highest rate in the NFL. Now, it doesn't always match up that the best defense is the one that gets the most three and outs, is the one that plays the least amount of snaps. There's a lot of reasons that can happen. But if you watch the Browns films, you know that that's why they didn't play that many snaps. They were getting a ton of three and outs. They were getting teams off the field. And that is why Miles Garrett's 14 sacks meant more than the 19 that TJ had because TJ had more opportunities. He had more pass drop backs. He dealt with more time to throw. He had just way more opportunity to get way more sacks than Miles. The fact that Miles got 14 when teams are getting rid of the ball within two and a half with well, two and a quarter second, when Miles is getting tripled and quadruple teamed and tight ends following them on a play, mirroring them double on each side, all of these crazy shenanigans that these coaches pull to slow down Miles Garrett. The fact that he got 14 is just so impressive when you consider that he's playing less snaps. I'm not playing less snaps, but his defense is on the field less because they're more effective and that these quarterbacks are getting rid of the ball quicker so he has less time in those snaps where he does get pass rush sets. Say all this to say, if you're just going to make an argument about sacks in this video, lead that sh at the dough. This is not about that. Um, and I also say that to say, this is why projecting stats for the defensive line is difficult because in a way, if I say that Miles Garrett is going to go from 14 sacks to 25 sacks, I'm also saying, unless I think he's going to have the most efficient year in NFL history, I'm also saying 
that the defense overall is going to be significantly worse because how else is he going to get that opportunity to get 25 sacks? How else is he going to see that many plays to get 25 sacks? See, the cumulative numbers are going to be probably the least important thing for the Cleveland Browns. It's really going to be about averages. It's really going to be about percentages. But since we like the cum cumulative numbers, I will throw some out there. Now, they're not going to be the most overwhelming expectation numbers that you're going to see. I know some people are going to throw Miles Garrett's going to get 20 out there. And I get why people would do that. Miles Garrett, very good. Miles Garrett, very good. That means ve very high sack count. You're going to predict a very high sack count. But that doesn't, that doesn't line up with this situation. The Browns are in a situation where Miles is going to get doubled, tripled. Other guys are going to benefit from that. And Miles is probably going to have to find a way to affect the game other than getting sacks. So here are my floor expectations. Miles is going to have 15 sacks. And the fact that we're talking about 15 sacks being an underwhelming number tells you that Miles Garrett's a Hall of Famer. Um, point blank period. Like the, the 15 sacks, the Browns have had what one other player in double digit sacks since coming back in 99, not named Miles Garrett. And we're like, oh man, Miles might only get 15. It's a low bar. It's crazy. Um, Zadarius Smith, I think he should get up to eight. Um, the reason I have his sack total coming up so high isn't because I think the defense is going to get better, but he missed so many sacks last year. He should have had like 10, but he missed so many. I expect him to be a better tackler this season, and that means he's going to capitalize on more of his opportunities, and that means he's going to have eight sacks this year. At least the bar for him is eight. Um, Obo. Okoronkwo, five sacks. He had about four and a half last year. If he just increases that half sack, I'm very happy with that production. Quentin Jefferson, I got him at three and a half sacks. Alex Wright, I got him at three. I know he had five last year, but I, I don't think he's going to see the field as much um, this year to get those opportunities. Dalvin Tomlinson, two and a half. Be happy with that. Michael Hall, if he gets two, I'd be happy with that. And then Mo Hurst and Shelby Harris. If I get more than like four sacks out of in between the both of them, I'd be happy. Um, but I got them both set at one and a half each. This would total about 42 sacks, which would be a pretty strong number just along the defensive line itself. And I think that would be production that you're very happy with when you look at it at the end of the day. It'd be production you could post up and say, hey, the Browns are one of the best defensive lines in all of football and this would back it up pretty well to a general audience now here's some of the stuff that tell you what's really going on with the defensive line because while i'd be happy with the traditional numbers the traditional production i think their efficiency numbers are the ones that need to be repeated from 2023 in order to ensure the browns have the same level of success that they had last year i need miles Garrett to maintain that ridiculous 35 percent pass rush win rate while being the number one most double team edge rusher in, in the NFL. You know how crazy that is? You know how nuts that number is when you consider that like an insane amount of Miles Garrett snaps are double teamed, that his win percentage is 35%. This is a, basically Miles Garrett has a OP win percentage after being nerfed. They let offensive linemen hold Miles Garrett, choke Miles Garrett, and these dudes are double teaming Miles Garrett. Like they're nerfing him to no end, and he's still at a 35% win rate. By far the number one uh pass rush run rate on true uh pressure. I mean not true, yeah, true pressure situations in the NFL. <laughs> it's insane. It is insane. Insane. Zadarius Smith, he had a 23.5 pass rush run rate in TPS. He needs to maintain that. Um, Obo Okoronkwo, 16.5. If he maintains that, I'm happy. Shelby Harris, 16.3. Mo Hurst, 16.2. Pretty much, if you have a defensive line that on average is getting in the high teens on pass rush run rate, 
You're going to be thrilled with that. Um, even Dalvin Thomas, who comes in at like a low 11% pass rushing rate, you're fine with. Because, again, Dalvin plays more of a 2-I than a 1-tech or a 3-tech. Sometimes he does slide out there at 3, but it's not because you're expecting him to be a dominant pass rusher just because you want extra weight on the defensive line just in case the offense wants to run out of these wide nine sets. So I'm fine with Dalvin having a low pass rush run rate. That's fine with me. Um, from a one run stopping perspective, there are a few players and a few numbers I really want to focus on. Um, missed tackle percentage versus the run as a whole needs to drop significantly. This is the biggest area of improvement that I expect from the Cleveland Browns is that they should be better tacklers versus the run. And there's no reason these three players should be as bad as they were last year because their career suggests that they were never this bad at tackling in run situations outside of this year. Now, that might be an indicator of what Jim Schwartz is asking them to do. It's just going to raise this number. But until I see further evidence of that, I have to assume that they can get back to their career averages. For example, Zadarius Smith is sitting at a 16.7% a percent missed tackle percentage versus the run when career wise, he's usually under 10%. I need Zadarius to get back under 10%. There Shelby Harris, 14.3. I need him to get back under 10%. Dalvin Tomlinson, 13%. Absolutely. 100%. Definitely. If there's one guy who I'm not going to mess around with being under that number is Dalvin Tomlinson. He has to be under that list. The Browns have to be more consistent with stopping the run. I understand the strategy last year was that they would get a couple of uh, TFLs and that would derail some teams, but you're going to play a more qualified schedule with better quarterbacks who are going to be able to come back from being behind the sticks a little bit. So you need to be more consistent in your run defense. And that just means tackling better at the line of scrimmage. You just need to do it. I understand the speed of things that were happening during the season might have been new to some of these guys, but now you're adjusted to it. Need these tackle percentages, well, missed tackle percentages to get back under 10%. But that's my thoughts for my expectations for the defensive line. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. You have a great day. Happy better night.